What's in you? We all have some type of issue. Yes, all of us. We're all flawed human beings in the process of sanctification after confessing our faults and repenting. Slowly, God works within us, cleaning out the fifth we put in there. The crazy part? Some of it was implanted in our DNA. Just think about your parents and how they were before coming to Christ, if they made that change. And if they haven't, well, God bless you. Some parents were fighters, profanity users, cutthroat, sexually promiscuous gangsters, ruthless, hateful, abusive, neglectful, childish, people who weren't putting up with nothing. And then you had the type who were kind-hearted, sensible, loving, mature, responsible, go-getters, committed, thoughtful, forgiving, teachers, the type we all strive to be. The issue is we have or have had a little bit of that in us. We were all born into sin, shaped in iniquity, but some generational stuff is in us, whether we like it or not. As a mom, I talk with my children about my past and present faults. As a young child, as a teenager, and, and, and as an adult, I really don't like holding things back from them. I guess that's another issue, huh? The thing is, the only way to identify with who you are is to know where you come from and where they come from, and also to understand God can wipe you clean. Sometimes you must call the issue by its name. So if you call the issue, it'll be able to recognize that it's being called out of you. So if it's within you and you call it by its name, that's the only way you'll be able to change. But if you don't recognize that something's within you, you won't be able to change. Some people don't know that they are manipulators, control freaks, verbally, spiritually, mentally abusive, insecure, crazy, depressed, stressed, lazy, provokers, negative thinkers, bullies, cheaters, flirtatious, addicted to drugs or controlled substances. And some of us need to look up the definitions for some of this stuff because we don't understand what it is. Some don't know that they've been traumatized by the abuse of a parent endured. They could have witnessed the abuse, also the behavior towards them from their parent and the lack of love in the home. Some people feel neglected. For example, I watched my mother work to provide for us when my dad decided not to do his job as a husband and father. Just think, if the mom has to work one long job or two part-time jobs, she's not actually at home, is she? Although you know she loves you because she works, how much affection are you receiving? And as a Christian woman, she was taught to pray, 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 and she did. When my dad would decide to come home, she allowed him in. That's what she was taught to tough it out. He physically abused her in front of us. She finally had enough and dipped. Now back to my point. Some of what's inside of us is from our parents. Some good, some bad. But you don't know or you don't have to do the bad things. It's all a choice. Some of, a, some of what's inside of you is from your parents. Some good, some bad. But you don't have to do the bad things. It's all a choice. Something is inside of you, whether you recognize it or not. And when people point it out in you, you probably rebuke it because you don't want to see yourself in that way. Just ask God to take it off of you or out of you. I believe we have to look back to understand the issue and then move forward. Some people don't believe that, but they are the same ones crying and saying, look at where the Lord brought you from. I may not be the smartest, but if the Lord brought you from someplace in the past, you know what? Never mind. I just know some of us were raised in a way to remain fearful, even in our adult years. Some were raised in a home with a manipulating mother, which causes some men to either hate or resent a woman. Some men portray the macho man act because they were raised in a home with either a parent who controlled them or have been abused. Instead of getting help, he's wanting to control, wanting to be manly in the negative form, not understanding he get more respect by just being the man, by example, action. And women who grew up with a crazy dad tend to be more vocal, bossy, and extremely strong in a way that prevents the man from being who he's supposed to be in her life. He's supposed to be the man. Let him be the man. The problem is she's trying to prevent her man from becoming her father. Although some women have awesome dads, a whole heap of us don't. And the man is trying to pre prevent the lady from becoming his mother. But they don't see they are both being a parent to each other, which is not what either dad, I mean, what but they don't see they are both being a parent to each other, which is not what either signed up for. Marriage isn't about becoming a dad or mom to this person. Leave your dad and mom 
and then cling to this person you think you know. Genesis 2 and 24. Which one are you? Are you the mom or the dad? You're supposed to be leaving your father and your mother and clinging to the one that you wanted to marry. Whoever you are, make sure God is leading you, not you and your friend Satan. Don't forget to pray without ceasing to the right God, please. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Read that and meditate on it. I hope you have a good day and I'll catch up with you later. All right. Bye. Thank you for watching Inner Thoughts and listening to my audio. I will see you next time. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. All right. See you next time. Bye.